What do singing teachers from around the world and from various backgrounds believe are the five most critical technical skills that singers need to develop? Let's find out. I always start with body alignment and developing a kinesthetic awareness of the voice. Secondly, I'm keen for my students to develop a habitual flow phonation. An even balanced tone is not only important for vocal health, but also ultimately serves resonance and intonation. And to achieve flow phonation, a singer must have a good management strategy around their breath stream. Good breath management then equips the singer to advance contemporary techniques such as twang and belt. Last but not least, for many contemporary genres, clear articulation of the lyric is paramount to communicating the narrative. So I'm always keen to help singers search for clarity in their communication through better vocal track shapes and articulatory tactics. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Marquardt DeVoe, the owner of Faith Culture Kiss Studio for Voice and Acting and the founder and curator of the Speakeasy Cooperative. And the five technical skills that I believe every singer should have, uh, no matter what, starts with kind of a coupling, and that is the ability to have all sorts of offsets and onsets. So how we begin a pitch and how we end a pitch, do we do that in a breathy way? Do we do that in a smooth way? Do we do that in a very pressed glottal way? Depending on the style that we're singing and then when we release the tone and we're done with a phrase does the genre and style that we're singing require a smooth offset a little bit of vocal fry maybe a little push or um, anything like that so onsets and offsets number one technical skill number two to manage the rate of breath leaving the body and to pay attention to what that different pressure under the glottis will feel like. So managing the rate of exhalation, how fast you wanna get that body and that breath flowing, or maybe you need to reserve it a little bit more depending on what you are doing. Third, I think that all singers need to know how to move around resonance in their resonators. So we all know from Karen's stuff where our resonators are, sometimes I want that resonance to sound and feel real uh, long and tubey. Sometimes I want it to be right up front, forward. So moving around resonance and feeling that in our bodies. Number four, mesa de voce. Dynamics. Every single ne singer needs to be able to go a little bit louder go a little bit quieter. They need to be able to do it in one phrase. They need to be able to do it over a couple phrases. Doesn't matter what genre. Can we mezza da voce? And five, even though it's technically not a technical skill, to me it very much is because I feel a lot of things in my body. And that is the skill of self-awareness. Being able to pinpoint what sensations we're feeling where in the body, in the instrument, all through what we are doing. Are we self-aware in our proprioception? Are we self-aware in what we're emoting and the story that we're telling? So there you go, my top five technical skills for all singers. The five most important skills for a singer to develop, for me, I'll lay them out this way. Number five would be pitch. And I put it at the bottom of the list because I feel singers spend a disproportionate amount of time focused on pitch alone when so many other aspects affect the listener. Those other aspects would be number four. Four is volume. Volume means the dynamics of the voice, not just whether you're projecting or not. The rise and fall speaks to a listener as to your emotional state. Another emotional signal would be rhythm. And so rhythm is my third skill for singers to develop. The rhythm not only of consonants and where they fall within the beat, but also durations of notes and whether they feel intentional or not. And number two would be timbre, which is the tone of the voice. Often you know in speech, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. I don't know about you, but my mother used to always say to me, don't give me that tone of voice, and that meant my attitude needed adjusting. And so timbre is this catch-all term that not only means the tone, but also how the note sustains, whether or not it decays or stays loud or stays the same volume. Also the beginning of a note, the onset, the, the release of a note, let's call it the offset, and whether you end with vibrato or start with vibrato. And then the first, most important, critical 
aspect, I'll say, because it's really not a skill. But the most important aspect of, to develop with your singing is trust. Trust is what the listener waits for. They wait for you to trust your choices, your skill set, your reflexes, your intention. Because if you don't trust your singing, why should they? What are the five most critical technical skills for a singer to possess or develop? Uh, okay, I've got to name five of them. So uh, number one would be body awareness. Um, that maps to your posture, how you're standing in space, but also kind of maps to um, how you understand where you're tense in your body and how to use that for good singing or how to release it for good singing. Um, in addition to body awareness, there's the coordinated breath, which is super tricky. I mean, if you're born with that coordination, that's amazing. But if you're like me and you have to learn it, it can take a while. Um, but that coordinated breath is just essential, essential as a technical skill for a singer. Um, so body awareness, coordinated breath, optimal fold closure. That's how your folds are actually meeting to create the sound. Um, I feel like... Uh, it's important for everybody, but it's super, super important if you're going to wind up with a dramatic voice. Um, so yeah, uh, is that something to think about? So body awareness, coordinated breath, optimal fold closure, um, command of your phonemes, uh, how you're using language, the vowels, the consonants, uh, those glottal stops uh, that are so important in uh, English or German, uh, and timing those consonants. So um, that's where I live, uh, and uh, that is so important as a technical skill. Uh, and then finally, uh, your articulations. Um, you know, staccato, marcato, um, legato. Achieving a, a great legato is like the goal of very fine singing. Um, and if you're working in CCM styles, you know, it's really important to understand how to create line versus something, you know, choppier for effect. Um, so yeah, I would say that's it. My list of top five skills would be body awareness, coordinated breath, optimal vocal fold closure, command of the phonemes and language, and uh, articulations for line. Hi, I'm Nancy Boss. I want to answer the question of what are the five most important technical skills that a singer must have. Now, I don't know if this is exactly what you might think of when it comes to technical, but these are absolutely skills that lead to our technical training and what we do in voice lessons. Number one is that the singer must have self-awareness of how singing works in their own body. Uh, from loud to soft, from high to low, what does it feel like? Um, how can I change it? How can I manipulate it? Because we cannot actually change things that we're not aware of. So if you're not aware of how your body feels with everything that you sing, then you can't actually change that. So you have to have that as a foundation. But next is self-awareness of how our emotions change how we're singing. Whether you're wide awake or tired, hungover, grumpy, brokenhearted, full of joy, exuberant, you can't control your emotions unless you're aware of how they're affecting how you sing. The third thing is self-awareness as you relate to the ensemble. And this means knowing what part your voice plays in the blend of the instruments. And if the only, and if the only other instrument is played by you, then you've got to split your brain between the two different musical instruments, your voice and the guitar or the piano. Audience awareness is the next technical skill that a singer needs to learn. You need to have in mind what change, what difference, what do you want the audience to take away from the performance. And then, while you're performing, you need to check in with them. You need to see if what you're doing is having the effect that you want it to have. And finally, acoustics awareness. You need to listen to your voice in the room, and you need to be aware of what you could do to make it work better, or if it's perfect. The thing is, that acoustics awareness is great as long as you know how to make the changes that you want to in order to make your voice better in that situation. So that's again coming back to a foundational layer and why we study voice at all. Hello there, this is John Henney. I'm a voice teacher in the Los Angeles area. 
Uh, I've been teaching for about ooh, 30 years. Um, I have a few uh, vocal products that I've done. I've trained a lot of other voice teachers, and so, and I'm also interested in vocal science. And so, my products uh, tend to reflect that as well. And um, I just have a passion for teaching voice and uh, sharing with what I know about voice. So, the first question um, five uh, key technical skills that, that a singer needs. You know, I tell singers, that you need to be able to do five things. You need to be able to make the sounds you need to make. You need to be able to make those sounds consistently. You need to be able to make those sounds consistently without hurting yourself, without incurring uh, vocal damage. And then you need to be able to deliver those sounds in a musical an emotional way in order to properly communicate. So to quickly break that down, uh, to make the sounds you need to make, look, uh, if you're going to sing Mozart versus Wagner versus rapping versus metal versus beatboxing, there are all different sounds that you need to make and you need to kind of figure out what it is that you're doing. Um, very often I'll ask people, what do you like to sing? And they just say everything. And it's like, okay, but that's fine. But ultimately as a career, you're not going to sing everything. Uh, so you need to really start focusing on the sounds that you need to make and you have to do them consistently. And this is really where, where studying uh, voice comes into play because that's going to be able to not only define the sounds, but enable you to do them consistently and in a healthy manner without incurring vocal damage. Uh, I was sent a student uh, once by a, a record label and he was none too happy to have to take lessons. And he told me so right at the beginning. He said, I don't want you changing you know, my vocal style. I really like how my voice sounds. And I said, okay. Well, what's the issue? And he said, well, when I do a show, I only get three songs in and then I'm blown out. And I said, okay, you see a problem where that's not sustainable. And he had to agree. So we found a way that he could make the sounds he needed to make consistently without hurting himself. Now, the next technical skill you need, you need to be a musician. You need to be able to make these sounds and deliver them in a musical manner so that not only you're understanding pitch, but you have rhythm and you have phrasing and you have dynamics and you can communicate with other musicians. And then finally, you need to be able to deliver those in an emotional way. If you have all the technical skill and all the musicianship, but you're just dull and dry emotionally, you're ultimately not communicating, which is what singing is about, which is the highest level of singing. So those are my five things. Just be able to make the sounds you need to make in a consistent manner without incurring vocal damage, musically and emotionally. Thank you. Hey singers, my name is Christopher David Mitchell, vocal coach here in London, and today, with the help from Karen, I wanna help you out with my top five most essential technical skills that every singer should have. Skill number one, chest voice. The chest voice is so important to give you power and real strength within the vocal folds to know that they're strong enough to really make some rocking sounds. It's gonna be so important for those money notes, epic high notes, as well as really warm, thick low notes. Let me just demonstrate for you quickly on that. So for people call it chest voice because they typically feel some conductive resonance in the chest. Hand on the chest and give me a really deep, strong, yeah. Not yeah or yeah, but yeah. Hey, yeah, how are you doing? We may not ever sing like that, but if you can have access and that vocal strength in your voice, it's going to help you in every note throughout your range. Vocal skill number two, head voice or falsetto. Now I say head voice or falsetto because really the female head voice is commonly very similar to the male falsetto. Both are going to be disconnected gears. This really light gear within head voice or falsetto is really gonna help you with vocal flexibility, is really gonna help increase the range, and also just general release within the vocal folds. This light gear as well will also contribute towards vocal health, 
stretching out the vocal folds, letting them be very light and loose is always going to be a great thing for ongoing vocal health. So I urge you to always keep stretching out this higher light gear in your singing voice. Vocal skill number three, the mix. Once we've got a really strong chest voice figured out and a really light head voice, of all said all, then after that, we need to start to blend and mix these two together. We need access to the chestiest chest, the falsettoiest falsetto, and everything in between. Then we find all the gears necessary to blend. I urge you to keep working on that mixed voice. That's a bit of a holy grail of singing that everyone is looking for, that uh, most singers really don't have down. So that will make you really stand out from the crowd once you get that mixed voice coordination mastered. Vocal skill number four, volume control. Really one of the last steps to vocal mastery is to have complete control over your volume on any given note. If you think about it, if you develop that chest and that head and you extend the range so you've got at least four octaves, then if you can hit every note in your range at whatever volume you wish, then you are in complete control of your voice. What you want to practice for absolute vocal mastery is being able to go through the notes in your range with different volumes. Somewhere like here. If you can go through the dynamic range on every note, then you're going to have complete control over your instrument. Technical skill number five, emotional connection. We save the best till last here, and forgive me for this one, Karen and all, but this isn't going to be technical. But please stick with me and let me get away with this one. Because we could talk about technique all day, and sometimes I do, and it's so important. But what is the real goal of vocal technique? Vocal technique isn't really for the audience. It's for you, the singer. It's so that you are not worrying about your voice, not standing on stage or in a recording studio thinking, is this not going to come out? Can I do it? Hocking back loads of licorice and ginger tea and steaming every hour God sends. No, because then you're on stage uh, wondering if the note's going to come out and you're on stage then not connected to what you're singing about. You can't be in the present moment when you're singing and authentically deliver that performance if you're worrying about your technique. Technique will be the gateway to being completely authentic on stage and being connected emotionally with your audience. So sing it from your heart, sing it from your soul, sing it like you mean it, sing it with real emotion. If you believe it, then the audience will believe it. If there's a singer who is doing amazing technical stuff, oh, that's a lovely head voice, oh, that's a lovely mixed voice, that's going to be impressive to some, and certainly for a few songs of a whole concert, it will be impressive. But will it hold the audience for two hours? Will it hold the audience for the entirety of the album? Some people will be impressed by vocal technique, but everyone will always remember the emotional connection. They will always remember how you made them feel. Well, I want to thank Karen so much for this, for inviting me on. Karen, I absolutely love the work you're doing, bringing the vocal community together. Awesome job indeed. And I'm always here if you do need me in the future for any more help or thoughts on singing. Thank you so much. Take care, singers. Hello there, Karen O'Connor of SingWise.com here. And while I believe that there are more than five technical skills that singers should develop, today I'm going to list those five that I feel are most critical. The first is the ability to optimally align our bodies. We tend to kind of overlook posture a lot, body alignment in training, because we feel as though as long as we just kind of stand up straight, we're good to go. But what we have to understand is that how we align our bodies affects how we're able to connect with our breath, with our breathing mechanism, as well as 
how the larynx receives signals. If we're a little bit hunched over, for example, that's going to inhibit the lower rib expansion, that lateral expansion that's really desirable in singing. And that in turn is going to prevent the diaphragm from really being able to lower optimally, which means that we're going to end up taking a higher, shallower breath. And also looking at things like the alignment of the cervical spine and the head, we have to remember that the laryngeal nerves, the nerves that bring signals to our larynx, run through the neck. And if the neck is not aligned correctly, there's a very good possibility that those nerves, the signals from those nerves, are going to be interrupted. And how we align our necks is also going to have a little bit of an effect on our resonance. It's going to change the shape of the resonator tube. So we want to have optimal alignment so that we can get a really good breath, an efficient breath, and good resonance, and our larynx is going to get better signals from the laryngeal nerves. And that brings me to the second critical skill, and that is the ability to manage our breath effectively. When our breath is managed effectively, we're going to have a better tone overall, we're going to have a steadier tone, we're going to have a healthier voice because we're going to be achieving a really nice balance between the pressures that we achieve here with the breath and what's happening here at the glottal level. How we're bringing those vocal folds together how they're vibrating. So while effective breath management is indeed going to be able to give us a steadier, stronger, nicer tone, it's also going to keep our instruments healthier. The third technical skill that I think singers should develop is the ability to initiate the tone in a balanced manner. That means that there's a balance between the breath pressures and the effort that we're using here to bring the vocal folds together and to keep them together. And we're going to vary how we initiate our tone, that onset of sound. Artistically speaking, we want to be able to have a lot of different options. We want to be able to have softer onsets and harder onsets. But first, we must achieve this balanced onset. We want our default mode to essentially be balance, and then we can switch things up from there. The fourth critical technical skill that I like my students to develop is the ability to sing consonants without them interfering significantly with the breath flow and legato. Consonants, by their very definition, are created with a degree of constriction somewhere along the vocal tract, which means that they tend to interrupt the airflow. They also tend to produce a little bit of tension in the vocal tract for a lot of singers. And so what we want to be able to do is create those consonants with the least amount of obstructiveness in them. So we want to make sure that we're just sort of lightly tapping them. We're moving the tongue and the jaw and the lips just enough to be able to clearly produce that particular sound, but not using so much muscular pressure and effort that we're really stopping that airflow. We want to create that feeling, that sensation, that impression that we're singing on this continuous stream of air. And that brings me to the fifth critical skill, and that is the ability to achieve an independence of function between the larynx, hyoid bone, jaw, and tongue. Now these three kind of work in concert, but we also have to remember that they have their own individual responsibilities. They have their own jobs to do. So we want to make sure, for example, that when we're producing a sound that requires the tongue to be high or fronted, that we're not necessarily yanking up on the hyoid bone and thus the larynx. We want to also make sure that when the jaw is moving that the tongue isn't necessarily doing more than it has to do. That will give us more freedom of function and therefore more ease and comfort in our singing. Five most critical technical skills for a singer to possess and develop. I only really have three. That would be pitch adjustment, closure adjustment, muscle independence, muscle isolation. I guess that's four, but the last two are kind of inter interlinked. So um, what I mean by muscle independence and isolation is independence between generally the articulators and the muscles in the larynx. So they work independent of one another. They can be adjusted independently of one another. And what I mean by isolation is relaxing everything but the muscles the singer needs to use. At least from te technique wise, 
I don't really think about much else. I've never really worked on much else apart from that 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 stuff really. That's that's all I'm thinking about when I'm working on my voice. Hey there, Fimo Farage here. What I'm gonna go over right now is some of the most important skills that I believe us singers need to be able to do. Number one is singing should be easy. There should be a sense of comfort and you should be able to sing through your vocal bridges with ease. Even the high notes, even the powerful notes, there should be a sense of ease and comfort. No rest decisions, cause I If you cannot do this, if you feel like there's a wall or a ceiling in your range or a vocal break, if you feel you had those issues, singing is gonna be difficult for you. Singing is gonna be uncomfortable for you and you're gonna feel insecure about your voice. The next skill that I believe us singers need to be able to do is improvisation, the ability to sing over various different chords. This is really important because if you can't do this, you never feel like you can just let loose. You'll always feel a bit stifled and unwilling to express what's on your mind because you're worried you're gonna make a mistake. So this will really give you the confidence to be able to just know what's gonna come out of your mouth and it will give you so much security in your voice. And that brings me into my next point, which I think is really important that we need, is the ability to be able to go from mid-sentence to have our speaking voice and our singing voice completely fused to be able to go from mid-sentence and to just go straight into singing from our speaking voice from our speaking voice to have both approaches perfectly married so that you can go straight from mid-sentence straight from mid-sentence straight into singing without even flinching without anything like that if you can't do this you're going to find you won't have uh, the confidence that you could have with your voice. You won't be able to truly let loose what's, what's in your heart. That brings me to the next point, and that is us singers need to be able to move our audiences with our voice. We need to be able to connect to the song. We need to be able to deliver emotionally. And you're going to find it's going to be very difficult to do that if you don't have the confidence with your voice. You don't have the security with your voice. You don't have the ease and freedom with your voice or the comfort. If you don't have those technical skills I just covered, you're going to find it's very hard to then connect and emotionally deliver the song. So all of those things really tie into the grand uh, goal of being able to deliver emotionally and connect to the song and, and move people with an awesome performance. I would begin um, with phonation, with the breath and the voice kind of together at the beginning. Um, whatever you want to call it, some people might just, you know, call it vocal fold closure, um, how that interacts with the air, resistance, something like that. But how friendly are your breath and your vocal folds um, is one key skill. And how can we get the body and the voice to synergize in a way that makes this feel like a, like a very easy job that doesn't require any management or, or skillful application per se. So looking at the body in that way and how it delivers airflow, I think is absolutely crucial to attaining that first skill of breath and voice synergy. Um, but yes, when we have this kind of like body working in synergy with the voice, sorry, I'm, you're getting an appearance from Drew the cat, I'm sure that's gonna happen a lot. Um, yes, when you've got flexibility in the body to, to help you with that synergy, then whenever you change register and things change down the line in the chain of voicing, especially in breath, um, then things like po posture, um, muscle balances and beliefs as well, anxiety, all that stuff, um, dealing with that stuff can help the body to respond to those changing pressures underneath the larynx and hence 
um, help that synergy of breath and vocal fold action um, to be maintained across the entire phrase, the entire song, um, whatever. Um, so that's number one. Uh, okay, as much as I wanted, we want breath and voice to be friends, um, what I also conversely want to happen actually is for articulators uh, and the pitch to actually be a lot less friendly than, than the air and the voice. Um, I want them to be a bit more estranged, essentially. Uh, and that's because articulators can so often get caught up with the pitch. They can react kind of um, quite badly at times to rising pitch, especially at certain times. And uh, if we're able to have exercises that can uh, disassociate the articulators to the helpful degree, you know, sometimes it's very difficult, but um, there's certainly a, a good portion of the range where we can um, disassociate the tongue from the jaw, um, those from the pitch, uh, and the larynx and the pharynx and the palate um, in that way, and certainly the lips as well, they can express a lot of tension or give us a lot of, or a big idea of what's going on back there in terms of articulator um, freedom. So I quite like giving those uh, articulators jobs to do. So the, the skill there is um, being able to articulate in certain ways um, on different pitches across different uh, registers and ranges in order to gain an independence in those articulators and eventually um, that will give you the freedom to explore other skills which are very helpful vowel shaping on high notes and um, especially in things like rock singing where you want the tongue to be in a certain position and you want uh, the lips and jaw to be um, open but not not like tight and overextended for instance so that's number two, is articulatory freedom from the pitch uh, as much as possible. Um, technical skill number three, for me, is chest voice and all the bottom notes, whatever you want to call it, doesn't really matter, but stability and a settled register in the bottom. Whenever, when, whenever I hear singers who want to work on their chest voice a lot, it's quite often it comes along with a sound where I would think, hang on, you, def you don't need to work on your chest voice in the way that you think you do, as in most people are going for something richer, 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 more booming, more piercing and imposing. Um, as much as that can be impressive for some people, not all voice types can handle that for a start, and quite often it leads people into overdoing their chest voice, pressing on their voice, so squeezing on the vocal folds, um, and eventually that's going to lead to um, injury or fatigue or and definitely a, a problem traversing registers comfortably and smoothly. So that's one side of it. Conversely, and this, this can be, again, males and females, but I see often see guys in the R&B arena with the um, aspirations of being that kind of light, romantic R&B tenor when their voices might not necessarily physiologically be that way. Um, and so when those singers tend to bring a much lighter chest voice to the game, again, that's absolutely fine. We have to have a spectrum, but sometimes that chest voice is light enough and the adduction and the energy in that voice is, is, is light enough for them to not necessarily um, injure themselves in that way that... Uh, people with a heavy chest voice do, but those singers tend to end up very tight um, with kind of symptoms of muscle tension, dysphonia, and uh, very thin sounds. And then eventually the ability or the inability to generate um, volume and intensity. And again, seeing a, seeing a lot of singers like that, um, it for me brings chest voice and the ability to settle it in 
uh, as a register on its own um, is really beneficial to everyone. Plus, it's going to be yeah your ability to generate intensity and belt. Um, Speech-like quality, which is a lot of contemporary and a lot of modern musical theatre, is going to be based around uh, a chess voice setting. So again, it needs to be easy and flexible. Um, stability going through your presagio. Uh, when the voice, when voices are lighter and the energy changes when you go through the middle of your voice in that distinct change or break or whatever you want to call it, a lack of stability in chest tends to exacerbate the big difference or sometimes the actual break on the other side as much as a heavy, as much as um, an excessive chest voice would as well. Um, but also chest voice and its ability to generate like nice energy in the voice does mean that in its balanced state it is also incredibly efficient um, and will allow you to be a very um, robust singer so i would urge everyone to put chess voice um, as being a, a high on the technical skill um, list okay but the next two are not technical skills because um, as much there are a lot of technical skills that could include in this, as I'm sure you're getting from from all of the other contributors um, in this thing. But um, going into the contemporary market at the moment with the singers that I work with, there's two skills that I think are, are much more important for original artists and those workhorse singers specifically. Um, improvisation combined with musicality for me is an incredibly useful skill um, and you don't need a lot of technical ability in order to attain this skill. So training in technical skills really for, for my market isn't everything. It, it really, really helps and they need technique for obvious reasons. Um, but when it comes to uh, getting the work and um, attaining the record deal and selling the records and stuff. It is a lot about uniqueness and it's a lot about style. Um, exploring improvisation and musicality allows that singer to discover so much more about themselves um, so that they can hone in on what they actually sound good doing. Um, improvising with vocal tone and vocal, even vocal characters, you know, like if you pretend to be someone else um, and you parody someone, you can also stumble upon technical benefits, for instance, you know, like if, you, if you're if you um, improvising as like a whining kid, for instance, which is something very common for technical training, you know, it, on one hand you're improvising, but on the other hand you're getting a technical benefit from it, um, actually with how the vocal folds airflow and the vowel react. So improvising is a way, I guess, into that technical world. So we should kind of hold it quite high. And in certainly for a lot of singers who are nervous to be encouraging improvisation and musicality as a way of breaking out of that kind of flat line um, personality that is so common in singers and, and so often holds them back from such exciting singing um, in the end. So improvisation and musicality for me is, is really far up there. Um, but the last one, which arguably will qualify everything else that you learn in your life as a singer, um, the last skill is, is listening. Now that could, that could be in the sort of uh, innate way. For instance, I wasn't, I wasn't learning to sing actively when I was obsessing over all those songs as a kid, out over Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder, all of the R&B singers of the 90s and whatnot. Um, and then driving down the motorway, I would be so, I would listen so deeply to how wonderful um, Wanye Morris's voice was from Boys to Men and how intricate his riffs were and how expressive he was, that I would be at least 15 minutes past my junction on the motorway and have to turn around again because listening deeply to those singers will um, allow you to absorb their stylistic uh, attributes. Um, they, it teaches you music. Uh, you don't even know it's happening half the time because every singer is just a product of all of the layers of people that they obsessed about over their music listening career. Uh, and then we end up singing the songs of those people a lot, singing exactly how they sing it. 
Um, and then we just uh, we learn so much about it. But for me, working with singers who want to learn new styles and want to be more exciting and blah, 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 um, all of those skills that are technical, which include onsets, offsets, um, tonal skills, rhythmic skills, uh, it could be anything, it could be even larynx positions or whatever, you may get that instruction to do this onset and that on offset, whatever, from a vocal coach, but it will be your taste, it will be your previous experience of music and of listening to certain styles of music that allow you to take on technical um, exercises and information and apply them in the way in a way that sounds good modify them so that you don't sound like it's so selective or so trained but rather to the listener it sounds just like you just so natural just so instinctive you know we really want to be making sure that as singers, we are really listening deeply to stuff and really enjoying it and, and helping that guide us in our decisions and how we apply technical exercises. Um, then we can all sound really exciting and not just like we're technically good. I don't like a technically good singer. It's not exciting for me. I like a stylistic and rhythmically good singer. And then the technique on top of it for me is just like the icing on the cake. I just love it when they've got all three, obviously. Hello everyone, I'm Dr Gillianne Kays. I'm a voice researcher, a singing voice specialist and an author. I also run a voice training company with my husband Jeremy Fisher called Vocal Process. And thank you Karen for inviting me to share my five top tips with your audience. So, moving on now to thinking about a technical aspect of singing, breath and vibrations. Yeah, I know, this is a two-in-one, but for me, whenever we're thinking about breath with the voice, we have to think about how the airstream is interrupted. All sound is vibration, and in the voice, those vibrations are powered by breath. In fact, I like to think of anything to do with the voice as being interrupted airflow. And this is why, for me, I don't find it very useful to do breathing exercises without sound. Practice learning how to manage your breath using sounds that uh, use the outflow of breath. So, for example, a sound like shh or zh, as in the French je, and feeling that sense of buzz and vibration. Play around with different patterns as you do it. You know, if you can get the skill of breath management sorted out, it takes you a long way towards managing pitch and, of course, volume. So it's very much the foundation of what you do breath and vibrations.